Welcome to the Rowdy Wolf Channel. I never thought my life would take such a complicated turn. My name is Alex, and I'm a college student working on my thesis. It's been a grueling process, filled with long nights and stress-filled days. But little did I know that the real challenge wasn't going to be my academic work, but rather an unexpected situation at home. It all started on a Friday night. I had been burning the midnight oil all week, trying to make progress on my thesis. By the time I dragged myself home, I was completely drained. The house was quiet when I entered, the soft glow of the kitchen light spilling into the hallway. Alex, is that you? Sarah, my stepmom, called out from the kitchen. Yeah, it's me, I replied, my voice rough with exhaustion. I trudged into the kitchen to find Sarah at the stove, stirring something that smelled delicious. My dad, Robert, was sitting at the table, reading the newspaper. You look beat, son, he said, glancing up at me over his reading glasses. I nodded, running a hand through my disheveled hair. I am. This thesis is kicking my butt. Sarah turned from the stove, concern etched on her face. Have you been eating properly? You look pale. I'm fine, I assured her, though my stomach chose that moment to growl loudly. Sarah laughed softly. Sit down. Dinner's almost ready. I shook my head. Thanks, but I think I'm just going to head to bed. I'm completely wiped out. Are you sure? Sarah asked, her brow furrowed. You really should eat something. I'm sure I said already backing out of the kitchen. I just need sleep. Good night, guys. I heard them both call out good nights as I climbed the stairs to my room. As soon as my head hit the pillow, I was out like a light. I'm not sure how long I slept before I became vaguely aware of a presence in my room. In my half-asleep state, I assumed it was just a dream. But then I felt a gentle touch on my hand, and my foggy brain struggled to make sense of what was happening. I felt my shirt being lifted slightly, and something cold touched my skin. It was such a shock that my body reacted instinctively, muscles tensing. But I was so tired, so desperate for sleep, that I couldn't bring myself to open my eyes or move. What happened next is something I'm still trying to process. I felt a hand gently caressing me in a way that was definitely not appropriate for a family member. My body responded, even as my mind reeled in confusion and shock. I wanted to speak up, to ask what was going on, but my exhaustion held me in a paralysis. Part of me wondered if this was just a vivid, strange dream, but it felt too real, too intense to be just a figment of my imagination. The touch continued, becoming more intimate. I felt a mix of panic and, to my shame, pleasure. My body was betraying me, responding to the gentle caresses, even as my mind screamed that this was wrong. Just when I thought I couldn't take anymore, when I was on the brink of forcing myself awake to confront what was happening, it stopped. I heard soft footsteps retreating, and then silence. I lay there, my heart pounding, my mind racing. What had just happened? Who had been in my room? I wanted to get up, to investigate, but my body was still heavy with exhaustion. Before I knew it, I had drifted back into a deep sleep. When I woke up the next morning, the events of the night felt like a distant, hazy dream. Had it really happened? Or had my stressed, overworked mind conjured up some bizarre fantasy? I stumbled downstairs, still groggy and confused. The smell of coffee and bacon guided me to the kitchen, where I found Sarah busy at the stove. Good morning, sleepyhead, she said cheerfully. You must have really needed that rest. How are you feeling? I stared at her, searching for any sign that something was different, that something had changed between us. But she seemed completely normal, humming as she flipped pancakes on the griddle. I'm okay, I said slowly. Where's dad? Oh, he had an early meeting with a client, Sarah replied, sliding a plate of food in front of me. Eat up. You need your strength for all that studying. As I ate, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Sarah bustled around the kitchen, chatting about her plans for the day, but I barely heard her. My mind was stuck on the events of the previous night. Had it really happened, and if it had? Was it Sarah who had come into my room? I couldn't bring myself to ask, what if I was wrong? What if it had just been a dream? The thought of accusing my stepmom of something so inappropriate made my stomach churn. So I said nothing. I finished my breakfast, thanked Sarah, and headed back to my room to work on my thesis. But as I sat at my desk, staring at my laptop screen, I couldn't focus. The memory of those touches, real or imagined, kept intruding on my thoughts. I spent the next few days in a fog, trying to balance my thesis work with the confusing emotions swirling inside me. 
Every time I saw Sarah, I felt a mix of embarrassment, curiosity, and guilt. She, on the other hand, acted completely normal, as if nothing had changed. It wasn't until the following Friday that things came to a head. I had gotten out of class early and rushed home to work on my thesis defense, which was scheduled for the next day. I was so focused on my work that I didn't hear Sarah come into my room. Alex, her voice made me jump. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I brought you some snacks. You've been working so hard. I turned to face her, my heart pounding. She was standing there, a plate of cookies in her hand, smiling at me like always. But something in her eyes seemed different. Or was I just imagining it? Thanks, I managed to say, taking the plate from her. Instead of leaving, Sarah perched on the edge of my bed. How's the thesis coming along? It's, it's okay, I said, struggling to maintain my composure. I'm just really stressed about the defense tomorrow. Sarah's face softened with sympathy. Oh, honey, you're going to do great. You've worked so hard. Before I knew what was happening, she had moved closer, her hand resting on my shoulder. The touch sent a jolt through me, reminding me of that night. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to know. Sarah, I said, my voice shaking. That night, last week, did you? Was that you in my room? The moment the words left my mouth, I saw the change in her face. The friendly smile faltered, replaced by a look of shock, and then, was it guilt? Alex, she began, her voice barely above a whisper. I, I don't know what to say. And in that moment, I knew. It hadn't been a dream. It had really happened. My stepmom had come into my room that night and touched me in a way that crossed every boundary. We sat there in silence for what felt like an eternity, the weight of this revelation hanging heavy between us. I didn't know what to say, what to do. Part of me was angry, part of me was confused, and a small, shameful part of me was. Curious. We need to talk about this, I finally said, breaking the silence. Sarah nodded, her eyes brimming with unshed tears. We do, but not now. Your father will be home soon, and you need to focus on your thesis defense. Can we, can we talk tomorrow? After your defense? I wanted to protest to demand answers now, but she was right. I couldn't afford to be distracted, not with my entire academic future hanging in the balance. Okay, I agreed reluctantly. Tomorrow, Sarah stood up, smoothing down her skirt with trembling hands. I'm so sorry, Alex. I never meant for this to happen. I, I'll explain everything tomorrow, I promise. As she left my room, I turned back to my computer, my mind reeling. How was I supposed to focus on my thesis now? How was I supposed to face my dad at dinner? Knowing what I knew, but I had to try. I had worked too hard for too long to let this derail me now. So I took a deep breath, pushed all thoughts of Sarah and that night to the back of my mind and dove back into my work. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of a complicated and emotional journey that would test the boundaries of family, love, and morality. As I sat there, trying to focus on academic theories and research methodologies, I had no idea how much my life was about to change. The next day loomed before me, filled with the promise of academic challenge and personal confrontation. I was standing on the precipice of something huge, something that would alter the course of my life forever. But for now, all I could do was prepare, both for my thesis defense and for the difficult conversation that awaited me. As night fell and the house grew quiet, I lay in bed, my mind racing. Tomorrow would bring answers, but would I be ready for them? Would I be strong enough to face the truth? Whatever it might be, only time would tell. The morning of my thesis defense arrived with a mix of anticipation and dread. On one hand, I was eager to present the work I'd poured my heart and soul into for months. On the other, I couldn't shake the anxiety about the conversation waiting for me at home. I barely tasted the breakfast Sarah had prepared, my stomach in knots. She moved around the kitchen with forced cheerfulness, but I could see the tension in her shoulders, the worry in her eyes when she thought I wasn't looking. Good luck today, son, my dad said, clapping me on the shoulder as he headed out for work. You've got this. If only he knew the turmoil brewing beneath our seemingly normal family breakfast. The defense itself passed in a blur. I presented my research, answered questions, and defended my conclusions. By some miracle, I managed to keep my personal issues from affecting my performance. When it was over, my advisor congratulated me with a wide smile. Excellent work, Alex. You should be proud. I should have been elated, 
but all I felt was a sense of impending doom as I made my way home. Sarah was waiting for me when I arrived, sitting at the kitchen table with two mugs of steaming coffee in front of her. She looked up as I entered, her face a mask of anxiety and remorse. How did it go? She asked softly. Fine, I replied, my voice tight. I passed. That's wonderful, Alex. I knew you would can we not do this? I cut her off, unable to bear the pretense of normalcy any longer. We need to talk about what happened. Sarah nodded, her shoulders sagging. You're right. Please, sit down. I took the seat across from her, wrapping my hands around the warm mug she prepared for me. For a long moment, neither of us spoke. Why? I finally asked, breaking the tense silence. Why did you come into my room that night? Sarah closed her eyes, taking a deep breath before meeting my gaze. I, I don't have a good answer, Alex. I've been asking myself the same question ever since it happened. Try, I insisted. I deserve an explanation. She nodded, her fingers tracing the rim of her mug. You're right, you do. The truth is, I've been struggling for a while now. Your father, he's a good man, but he's been so distant lately, always working, always distracted. I've been feeling lonely, unappreciated. I listened, my emotions a swirling mess of empathy and discomfort. That night, Sarah continued, her voice barely above a whisper. I'd had a bit too much wine. I was feeling reckless, I suppose. I saw your light on and thought maybe we could talk. But when I got to your room, you were already asleep. She paused, taking a shaky breath. I don't know what came over me. You looked so peaceful, so. I don't know. Before I knew what I was doing, I, well, you know what happened next. I sat there, trying to process her words. Part of me wanted to be angry, to lash out at her for violating my trust, my personal space. But another part of me saw the pain in her eyes, the genuine remorse in her voice. I'm so sorry, Alex, Sarah said, tears spilling down her cheeks. What I did was inexcusable. I betrayed your trust and your father's. If you want me to leave, I'll understand. The thought of her leaving, of our family falling apart, hit me like a punch to the gut. Despite everything, I realized I didn't want that. I don't want you to leave, I said slowly. But I don't know how to move past this. How can I trust you again? Sarah looked at me, hope and fear warring in her eyes. I don't know, but I want to try, if you're willing. I'll do whatever it takes to make this right. We talked for hours. Laying everything out on the table, Sarah shared more about her feelings of loneliness and neglect in her marriage. I opened up about my own insecurities and the confusing mix of emotions her actions had stirred in me. As the afternoon wore on, I found myself feeling a strange sense of closeness to my stepmom. Not in the inappropriate way of that night, but in a way I'd never experienced before. For the first time, I was seeing her as a real person, with flaws and struggles of her own. What do we tell Dad? I asked as our conversation wound down. Sarah's face fell. I... I don't know, part of me thinks he deserves to know the truth. But another part, is afraid of what it would do to our family, I finished for her. She nodded, looking miserable. I love your father, Alex, despite everything I do. The thought of hurting him like this, I understood her dilemma all too well. The weight of our secret felt like a physical presence between us. Maybe, I said slowly, we don't need to tell him everything, but we should talk to him about the underlying issues your feelings of neglect, the distance between you two. Sarah considered this, hope flickering in her eyes. You think that would be enough? I don't know, I admitted, but it's a start. And maybe, maybe it would help prevent something like this from happening again. We agreed to take things one day at a time. Sarah would work on communicating better with my dad and I would focus on finishing up my college work. We both promised to be more open with each other, to talk through any feelings or issues that came up. As Sarah stood to start preparing dinner, she paused, looking at me with a mix of gratitude and lingering guilt. Thank you, Alex, for listening, for not hating me. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness. I don't hate you, I said truthfully. I'm still processing everything, but I don't hate you, she nodded, giving me a watery smile before turning to the stove. That night, as I lay in bed, my mind replayed our conversation. I felt a strange mix of emotions relief at had having cleared the air lingering confusion about my own feelings, and a new understanding of the complexities of adult relationships. I also couldn't shake a nagging sense of guilt. 
by agreeing to keep part of what happened a secret, was I betraying my dad? Was I complicit in something I shouldn't be? These questions plagued me as I drifted off into an uneasy sleep. The next few weeks were a strange dance of trying to maintain normalcy while navigating our new reality. Sarah and I were hyper aware of each other, careful to never be alone together for too long, to keep a respectful distance. I threw myself into my schoolwork, using it as a distraction from the turmoil at home. Sarah, true to her word, made efforts to reconnect with my dad. I'd come home to find them cooking dinner together or planning weekend outings. But underneath it all, the tension remained. Every now and then, I'd catch Sarah looking at me with an unreadable expression. Or I'd find myself remembering that night, my body reacting in ways that filled me with shame and confusion. It all came to a head about a month after our talk. I came home early from class one day to find Sarah alone in the house. She was in the living room, curled up on the couch with a book. Oh, she said, startled by my entrance. I didn't expect you home so early. Professor canceled class, I explained, hovering awkwardly in the doorway. Where's dad? Working late, Sarah sighed. Again, I could hear the frustration in her voice, see the slump of her shoulders. Without thinking, I moved to sit beside her on the couch. Our things. Not going well? I asked hesitantly. Sarah gave me a sad smile. I'm trying, Alex. I really am. But sometimes I wonder if it's enough. If we're just too far gone. I felt a pang of sympathy for her. Despite everything, I knew she was genuinely trying to make things work. I'm sorry, I said, reaching out to pat her hand comfortingly. The moment my skin touched hers, I felt a jolt of electricity. Our eyes met, and suddenly the air between us felt charged with an intensity that scared me. Sarah must have felt it too, because she quickly pulled her hand away, standing up abruptly. I should start dinner, she said, her voice shaky. As she hurried to the kitchen, I sat there, my heart pounding. What was that? Why did I react that way to a simple touch? I retreated to my room, my mind in chaos. I thought we'd moved past this, that we'd put that night behind us. But clearly there were still unresolved feelings, still a dangerous attraction simmering beneath the surface. That night, I lay awake for hours, grappling with my conscience. I knew what I was feeling was wrong. Sarah was my stepmom, my dad's wife, but I couldn't deny the pull I felt towards her, the way my body responded to her presence. I thought about my dad, about how oblivious he was to everything happening under his own roof. I thought about Sarah, trapped in a marriage that was slowly dying, and I thought about myself caught in the middle of it all, trying to navigate feelings and situations I was woefully unprepared for. As dawn broke, I made a decision. I couldn't keep living like this, walking on eggshells in my own home, constantly battling these inappropriate feelings. Something had to change. With a heavy heart, I began to pack a bag. Maybe some time away, some distance from this distance from this whole situation would help clear my head. I could stay with a friend for a while, focus on finishing up my last few classes. As I zipped up my backpack, I heard movement in the hallway. Sarah was up, probably starting her morning routine. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the conversation ahead. I had to tell her I was leaving, had to explain why. It wasn't going to be easy, but it was necessary. With one last look around my room, I opened the door, ready to face whatever came next. Little did I know, the most challenging part of this whole ordeal was yet to come. As I stepped into the hallway, backpack slung over my shoulder, I nearly collided with Sarah. She was on her way to the kitchen, still in her robe, hair tousled from sleep. Her eyes widened as she took in my packed bag and the determined set of my jaw. Alex? She asked, her voice tight with concern. What's going on? I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the conversation ahead. I'm leaving, I said, my voice steadier than I felt. I think. I think it's best if I stay with a friend for a while. Sarah's face fell, a mix of understanding and dismay washing over her features. Oh, Alex, she sighed. Is this because of yesterday? Because of us, I nodded, unable to meet her eyes. It's not just yesterday, it's everything. I can't keep pretending everything's normal when it's not. I need some space to figure things out. She reached out as if to touch my arm, then thought better of it, her hand falling limply to her side. I understand, she said softly. But please, can we talk about this first? Your father will be devastated if you just disappear. The mention of my dad sent a pang of guilt through me. In my rush to escape, I hadn't even considered how my sudden departure would affect him. 
Okay, I agreed reluctantly. We can talk. We made our way to the kitchen, the tension between U.S. palpable. Sarah busied herself making coffee, her movements jerky and uncertain. I sat at the table, my backpack a heavy weight by my feet. As Sarah set a steaming mug in front of me, we heard the front door open. My dad's voice called out, I'm home. Sarah and I exchanged panicked looks. He wasn't supposed to be back yet. My dad appeared in the kitchen doorway, his tired face breaking into a smile as he saw us. Well, this is a nice surprise. Both of you up early on a Saturday. His smile faltered as he took in the scene my packed bag, Sarah's tear-stained face, the heavy silence between us. What's going on? He asked, his voice laced with concern. In that moment, looking at my dad's confused face, I knew we couldn't keep lying. The weight of our secret was tearing us apart, and if we had any hope of moving forward, we had to come clean. Dad, I said, my voice shaking slightly. We need to talk, all of us. The next hour was one of the most difficult of my life. We sat around the kitchen table, cups of coffee growing cold as we laid everything bare. Sarah and I took turns explaining what had happened that night, the confusion and guilt that followed, and the unresolved tension that had been simmering ever since. My dad listened in stunned silence, his face a mask of shock and hurt. When we finished, he stood up abruptly, pacing the kitchen with his hands clenched at his sides. How could you? He finally said, his voice raw with emotion. He looked at Sarah, pain etched in every line of his face. How could you do this to us? Sarah broke down then, tears streaming down her face. I'm so sorry, Robert. I never meant for any of this to happen. I was lonely feeling neglected, but that's no excuse. What I did was unforgivable. My dad turned to me, and the look in his eyes nearly broke me. And you, Alex. Why didn't you tell me? I felt tears pricking at my own eyes. I'm sorry, Dad. I was confused and scared. I didn't want to hurt you. He laughed bitterly. Well, that worked out great, didn't it? The silence that followed was deafening. We sat there, three people who loved each other, who had hurt each other, trying to navigate the wreckage of our family. Finally, my dad spoke again, his voice calmer but still strained. I need some time to process this. I'm going to stay at a hotel for a few days. Robert, please, Sarah began, but he held up a hand to stop her. I'm not making any decisions right now, he said. I just need space to think. As he left to pack a bag, Sarah and I sat in silence, the weight of our actions pressing down on us. I'm so sorry, Alex, Sarah whispered. This is all my fault. I shook my head. We're all responsible for our choices. I could have spoken up sooner. Dad could have been more attentive. We all played a part in this. The next few weeks were a blur of tense conversations, tears, and soul searching. My dad came back after a few days, and we began the painful process of rebuilding our relationships. It wasn't easy. There were moments of anger, of blame, of despair. But slowly, gradually, we started to heal. My parents began couples therapy, working through years of unspoken resentments and miscommunications. I started seeing a therapist of my own trying to unpack my complicated feelings and learn healthier ways of dealing with stress and confusion. As for Sarah and me, we worked on redefining our relationship. We set clear boundaries, always making sure we weren't alone together for too long. We talked openly about our feelings, acknowledging the inappropriate attraction but committing to never acting on it again. It was a long, difficult process, but slowly, things began to improve. My dad made efforts to be more present, to show Sarah the appreciation she'd been craving. Sarah threw herself into rebuilding trust, both with my dad and with me. And me? I focused on finishing school, on building a life outside of the family drama. I went on dates, made new friends, started planning for my future career. As the months passed, I found myself feeling lighter, more at peace. The guilt and confusion that had plagued me began to fade replaced by a new understanding of the complexities of adult relationships and the importance of open communication. One evening, about a year after that fateful night, we sat down to a family dinner. As I looked around the table, I was struck by how far we'd come. My dad and Sarah were holding hands, laughing at some shared joke. The tension that had once filled our home was gone, replaced by a warmth and openness that felt entirely new. I'm proud of us, I said suddenly, surprising even myself. We could have let this tear us apart, but we didn't. We faced it head on and came out stronger. My dad smiled, reaching out to squeeze my shoulder. We did, son. 
It hasn't been easy, but I'm grateful we found our way through it. Sarah nodded, her eyes shining with unshed tears. I never thought we'd get here, she admitted. But I'm so thankful we did. I love you both so much. As we continued our meal, talking and laughing, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. We weren't perfect, no family is. We'd made mistakes, hurt each other in ways that once seemed unforgivable. But we'd also found the strength to forgive, to heal, to rebuild. I thought back to that confused, scared version of myself from a year ago, and I wished I could tell him that it would all work out in the end, that the pain and confusion wouldn't last forever, that with honesty, effort, and love, even the deepest wounds can heal. As I helped clear the dishes after dinner, I caught sight of my reflection in the window. I looked older, more mature, but also happier. I had faced one of the most challenging experiences of my life and come out the other side stronger and wiser. I knew that life would continue to throw challenges our way, but I also knew that we now had the tools and the strength to face them together as a family. That night, as I lay in bed, I felt a sense of gratitude wash over me. Gratitude for second chances, for the power of forgiveness, and for the resilience of the human heart. We had walked through fire and emerged, not unscathed, but unbroken. And as I drifted off to sleep, I felt, for the first time in a long time, truly at peace.